Joining me now from Caracas is the opposition politician and democracy activist Leopoldo Lopez. He's been banned from running for office. And here in the studio with me is Michael Shifter, director at the Inter-American Dialogue. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for joining me. Let me ask you first, Mr. Lopez, is there any chance whatsoever that the opposition can make any kind of showing in the upcoming elections. We've heard that the opposition is fragmented and doesn't really have a solid footing right now. Well, to answer that question, one needs to be in context of what's happening in Venezuela. We, we don't have a normal democracy. Uh, we don't have fair play in an electoral process. The government has progressively taken over the media in order to present messages. The government has progressively taken over different ways of presenting an alternative. And as you said in the clipping, those that are not with the government or share the views of the government are presented as enemies of the republic. So the, a government that has controlled of all the powers, all the military, all the petrodollars that are used for campaign without control, that's no fair play for an electoral process. Okay. However, one needs to say that we have already won elections. We won in, the, in 2007 a national election, and we won again in the year 2008. So, yes, we can win if we present the right candidates and if we go knowing that this is David against Goliath, because that's what's the show for an election in Venezuela going to be David against Goliath. Right. But if we have a precise okay. uh, take of these elections, yes, we can win. Mr. Shifter, can David versus Goliath win, and how do you square the fact that Hugo Chavez does remain very popular, despite some of the crackdowns that Mr. Lopez is describing. Well, Chavez is popular because he uh, has an emotional bond with a lot of Venezuelans, and he put his finger on a legitimate grievance in Venezuela, inequality, injustice. The problem is he can't solve the problems. He can't deliver results. Why so not? People, because of the model of governance. He's the only one who makes decisions. He ha his, the, his style has been one of confrontation. There's greater polarization in Venezuela than ever before. Both sides are at each other. And you can't manage an economy. You can't bring a society together if you have that level of confrontation. Mm -hmm. And that, is the, that, I think, is the core failing of Hugo Chavez. So he has the bond. He's put his finger on, the, uh, on a grievance. He has the oil money, but there's been a lost opportunity. The results speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lopez, a lost opportunity from a country which really does have a huge amount of wealth, oil wealth, amongst other things. What are the people saying? Are these polls correct that more and more people are disaffected with the, the state of the economy, the state of the power outages, water shortages, etc.? Well, certainly, 10 years into a government that has failed to commit to its promise of change 10 years ago uh, is enough for Venezuelans to see that this is not the way to bring about change. Not only electricity shortage, water, but also insecurity. I would like to show briefly some figures. In the year 1998, there were 8,620 homicides. In the year 2009, 19,400 homicides. And that's a change of 125 percent in the amount of Venezuelans that are killed by violence every year. And that's a reality that the government cannot deny. Not only Venezuelans are being killed in the streets, but they don't have a shot for justice for the families that are being killed. Can I ask so you there is, on the one hand, government failure, as Michael Shifter said. I agree with that. But on the other hand, you have a government that is progressively going against the basic issues that can call a government a democracy. Okay. Freedom of speech, freedom to unionize, and other basic aspects that define a democracy. Let me ask you, Mr. Shifter, we briefly touched with the Ambassador Alvarez on the issue of Cubanization. Is that as serious a problem as some people inside, uh, inside Venezuela think? Well, the problem in Venezuela, again, is the lack of institutions and lack of capacity. Cuba has a Ministry of Health, at least. In Venezuela, the health system is terrible. There are no institutional abilities, and, and so, so people are not receiving any benefits. Clearly, the, influence, the, the, the effect of Cuba is very, very strong. Cuba needs Venezuela. Venezuela needs Cuba. It gives Chavez a revolutionary carnet, his credential, Cuba. And Cubans need the oil and need the money from Venezuela. So there's a mutual need there. But isn't it extraordinary that Cuba, which has a fraction of Venezuela's wealth, is apparently propping up 
the government so significantly in all the basic services, even in police reform, in the, in the military doctrine? Cuba's expertise is in control. And that's what Chavez needs right now. So that's mm -hmm. what the Cubans are providing. The, the Venezuela is worried about losing control. The problems are mounting. The decay is deepening. And so the Cubans are coming in to shore them up. Mr. Mr. Uh, Lopez, uh, I know you sound optimistic. You talk about playing David to Goliath. But how optimistic can you be if there is such a controlled atmosphere in Venezuela? How can even a David play any real role in elections? Well, since the time of David, and we won't be the first society that can overcome a, a dictator-type government. We won't be the first society to overcome a society that seeks and is hunger is to control all society in the economy, in the media, and in all government aspects. What we need to do is to organize ourselves. Yes, we have elections as we had the last year and as we will have next year and the year after. But elections is not enough. We need to organize ourselves in unions, community mm -hmm. leaders, and especially, and I would like to underline this, especially the young. The young have okay. brought up new perspective, new hope for Venezuelans. Mm -hmm. The young people are not with the government and we need to organize those three big uh, flows of energy, the union leaders, students, and community Mr. leaders Lopez? to bring about change in Venezuela. Change will be possible in Venezuela. Mr. Chavez is very charismatic. He has that bond, as Mr. Schiff has talked about. Who is supporting him? Because he still has support. Well, when, when one can talk about the popularity of our government, I would ask the following question. Is a government popular when it tries to restrict the message that is being presented to Venezuelans? For example, today, the government has presented the possibility to control Internet access. The government also is controlling, as we said before, the economies, nationalizing states. Uh, view of the economy. So okay. when we talk about popularity or not, those are measures that are not taken by a popular government. So I will answer that what the government is doing now is basically going away from measures of popular governments to measures of power-hungry type governments. Mr. Shifter, is that right? Is he shifting from this popular leader to, a, to an autocrat? Well, he is, but I think his base wants to be sure that the opposition doesn't want to go back to the pre-Chavez days, because that, that is also not the alternative. And I think the challenge for Leopoldo Lopez and other members of the opposition is to show that there's a viable alternative, to show that they're forward-looking, and to unify an opposition to present an alternative platform. That, that still remains the key challenge. There have been improvements in the opposition, but I think that they really have to focus on that main task.